Three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Stefan McMillan. Well, I'll do that again. Three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Stefan McMillan. And Justin, the best singer in the world, Watson. And you're listening to episode 13 of Exposure, a half hour sit down with some of online's newest and exciting content creators. And our guest is Kevin from KWK Box. And let's start the show. Hey, Exposure fans, we are back for another episode of Exposure. Talking to YouTubers, talking to content creators, getting down to the nitty gritty, having fun. Justin, what's on the agenda today? Today we have an update for our philosophical corner. We're going to interview Kevin. We're going to go over word of the week. We have obsession of the week and we have a content highlight. And that will sum up today's show. And let's get right on started with an update on Philosophical Corner. So guys, welcome to Philosophical Corner. This is an update... And I've been watching a lot of videos, and lately there have been a lot of update videos, coming out videos, stuff like that. And I must say, I am now completely against disabling in the comment section. Now, of course, uh, not the coming out videos so much, I, I don't think I've seen that. But there have been some videos, like it was one video, I guess it was an altercation between the two, and da da da, some information got leaked, whatever. But they put up the video and then the comment section was disabled. And I was like, what? And then, the, you know, they had to do at the at the end, they had the nerve to say, oh, we wanted to have an open discussion. How? And it's like, don't you want people to interact? And you might get hate, but you're going to get hate no matter what. It's, it's the Internet. And you also you're not letting your supporters support you. You just. And the haters are going to come back to the next video regardless. So, it is what it is. And if you really don't want to see the comments, why why, don't post the video? Well, that was my rant. Was that it? Well, I'm glad you were able to get that off your chest. We'll be right back with the interview, the enthralling interview with Kevin. I didn't know he was pulling out the sources. A what? The source? Excuse you. Let me pull out my super later. <laughs> hey, did you guys know you can get even more content from your two favorite hosts? Just go to YouTube and search Slowless Network. You can catch our reviews of popular shows like Bloodline, other podcasts, and full episodes of Exposure. Don't forget to subscribe. So everybody loves online shopping and everyone pretty much loves Amazon. I know I do. It's so convenient and easy to use. Well, now you can do your regular shopping and support Exposure by using our affiliate link. That's j.mp forward slash slow list. Use our link and just shop as you usually would. It's free, easy, and you'll be helping out the show. That's j.mp forward slash slow list. That's S-L-W-L-I-S-T. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Thorne from www.youtube.com slash THRNEM8, and you're listening to Exposure. And we're back with our guest, Kevin. Thank you for coming. No problem. <laughs> so, just to start off things... When did you start YouTube? Um, I've been on YouTube for quite a while, but I didn't start putting up videos until about uh, maybe three or four months ago. So I'm still fairly new to the game as far as posting videos go. And um, I just got a website to kind of coincide with it, which is kwkbox.com. And I already had that website long in the past. And I used to just post, you know, articles about random things or whatever I felt like, you know, BSing about and uh, kind of evolved into more. And I decided, you know, people want to read less and watch more. So that's why I'm trying the old shtick on YouTube to see how well it sticks. You know what I mean? So for the people that don't that aren't familiar with your content, can you give us a little description of the types of stuff you upload? Um, well, for my channel, I... This is my vision for it, really, is it's kind of like you'd think of, you know, ABC, CBS, Fox. Just think of it as a station, you know what I mean? And when you mm -hmm. flip on that station, you would see different types of content. It's not exactly a labeled. Um, currently, predominantly, I have a lot of um, retro gaming and um, video game related stuff just because that's one of my strong interests i now that the weather's actually improved where i live i finally got to add on another extension which is disc golf videos that shows um parks that are around me because it's i get a lot of popular parks that are around where i live and a lot of people you can only see so much with a picture so i document them or i'll play through them and i wear actually recording sunglasses which kind of comes in handy <laughs> and people can really see what I see because I tell you, I, I research some parks and then I'll drive an hour away and a picture is very deceiving. You know what I mean? It's almost mm -hmm. like a bad, bad internet date. <laughs> so um, I, I do videos just to help people out with that. And those actually have been doing pretty well, but I've only posted a few just because it's been limited with the weather. But as it gets better, there'll be more of those um, to kind of differentiate my channel from because I know I'm probably trying for one of the most saturated channels on YouTube, which is video game related. And for mine to kind of stand out from all those others is that I actually make an attempt to find a person that actually is well versed in the game. It isn't just like me just trying this game out and yeah, I'm just some average Joe and watch me struggle and fail. I actually seek out people in the community that are actually well versed in the game or those types of games. And I'll probably do a little bit of homework. So I'll talk with them kind of like a talk show while they actually play and demonstrate how to really plow through a game to make it a little bit more interesting. Cause there's just too many shows in my opinion out there. That's just somebody let's playing it generically or, somebody's just sitting there and ranting about a game so i try to differentiate that way mm -hmm. yeah there's always that that corner of youtube that someone can find their audience yeah so is there so i know you're a pretty recent youtuber but is there any advice you'd have for someone who hasn't even uploaded one video yet Who? um actually yeah i got some good advice from there's different resources that i had no clue that existed before I got into it, um, I don't know if you use it all. It's that yttalk.com, youtubetalk.com. Um, that forum, I'd have to say, is extremely helpful in um, the community there. If you just post generic questions like, hey, how do you upload or how do you do this type of thing in YouTube or even in general, um, everybody seems to be pretty active in trying to actually help you and they don't ignore you or kind of attack you because they kind of designed that forum to reward people that help each other mm -hmm. so i'd say definitely look at the forum um definitely don't just go on youtube and slap up videos just because you think you're going to be a millionaire overnight i i doubt that happens very <laughs> often um keep in mind like i kept reminding myself before i even started doing this i initially started doing it just for my own entertainment because uh me and my best friend we only meet up about once a month, and uh, it's he lives a little bit over an hour away. And what we always called it back in our day 
was uh, Game Night, and that's why I have a section of my channel just called Game Night because that's just me and my best friend, and we would always make it a point just to play you know, our favorite games, but we would always make it a point to pick some kind of crazy off-the-wall one and give it the college try, and then just the engagement we'd have at that or, you know, bickering with each other was always such a funny experience. We decided, hey, just for fun, we can at least document this because whether this channel I have flops or not, I'll still appreciate having these videos because when I'm an old geezer in my uh, home and I can barely do anything else, I can at least watch and make fun of myself, so... <laughs> It's a, it's a nice respect to have that to fall back on. So that was kind of a goal doing it that way. But um, not to get too much on a tangent, I'd just say whatever you do end up posting when you do do videos, make sure you're passionate about it. You actually want to do it. Don't do not do it for the wrong reasons, basically, which is like you're going to make money or something. Because I, I know a lot of people that got a lot of subs and they aren't even coming near to what they'd be. I mean, let's put it this way. They'd be at best making minimum wage <laughs> with, like, having 100K subs, you know what I mean? Considering the hours they put into it, you know, like the filming, the editing. And, I mean, as you know, editing is definitely time-consuming. Mm -hmm. If you actually branched it out from how much you're making, yeah, you'd be making, you know, cents an hour technically. <laughs> mm -hmm. So try to avoid all that. But other than that, it's still a fun community and uh, excellent experience all around. Just got to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. would be my, my two cents. Well, you kind of um, tripped uh, a memory. Uh, oh, me yeah? and my best friend, we used to play games. Um, I remember on Super Nintendo, we used to play um, Double Dragon. Oh, man. The Super Double Dragon, right? Yeah. And... Oh, that's an awesome game. <laughs> and uh, I kind of the... wish we were, you know... I mean, we were young, but I kind of wish we were able to record and stuff back then. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I wish I would have just at least put something on there to record in it. And, I mean, those those memories that you had with your friend, wouldn't you love that even if the recording was lower quality or anything, you'd still enjoy to rewatch that today, I'm sure, right? Yeah. So that's that's the same motivation I got with my buddy. It's like, you know what? Hey, if this, this takes off, great. Then we'll have actually other people or a community that can give us suggestions on what to play, which is a lot more fun than me trying to research something last minute before he comes over, you know? So yeah. that's why we're all about, hey, whatever you guys suggest, we'll give it the college try, and then it'll be the best way to approach it. But it's just keeping those uh, time capsule memories, to say the least, is a good motivation. So I hope this one doesn't put you too much on the spot, but, like, what are your top three retro games and top three modern games? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Should have did some uh, some homework. Um, well, with uh, top three retro games, uh, you just – it's – part of me wants to be like this. Part of me wants to be like, hey, you know what? I almost want to say, like, obscure ones because so many people would be like, oh, you know, Mario, Zelda, yeah. all the all the typical ones. And so many people are just, as much as those are top favorites of mine, you're, you're just sick and tired of hearing them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, I try to throw a little bit more of a change in there. So other than the obvious ones, so I'll say my less obvious ones, I'd say that I'm a big fan for retro. Um, you got to say Doom. I'm sorry. Doom is probably the best mm. game I ever played, even arguably against your Mario and Zeldas. Like, Doom is Mario or Zelda level for computers as far as I'm concerned. That is, like, mm. what really took that sucker off. Um, but um, for retro, other than just, like, Mario and Zelda and the bigger franchises, I'd have to really say probably Mega Man. Maybe he's not as big. He'd be a big retro game for me. And when they say Mega Man's, I guess I'd say Mega Man 3 if I had to throw one out there. That one's probably my favorite. There's going to be a lot of haters on your channel saying Mega Man 2 is better. But um, just for the record, guys, I played 3 before 2. So <laughs> it felt like I was going backwards when I played 2 after beating 3. So that probably didn't help number 2 out. But I'd still say 2 is the my next favorite. That is an excellent game for anybody who wants to start spreading hate about that. But no, I'd say Doom, Mega Man, and probably, I mean, how what is retro considered? PlayStation 1 considered retro yet? Is that old enough? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> it feels like it, but... It I might be, though, because, I mean, they are, like, artists from 1999 that people have no idea who are today so maybe yeah i think it's getting close i want to say playstation one is getting close to the point that you know it's just in that whole retro genre because you got well keep in mind i mean there's ps4 now so you're talking about three console generations behind mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, it's arguable. So, I mean, I just throw in there uh, probably Destruction Derby for PlayStation One. It also was released on the computer, but the the PlayStation version is actually superior than the computer version. Um, it's got a lot more additions to it. It's just a a game that. When I say a favorite game, I can always go back to a game that at any time you say, hey, let's play this, I'm not going to cringe. I'll be like, that's fine. Let's play. So <laughs> that is a game that I'm always up for, something to that level. So for retro, we got Mega Man 3, Doom, and Destruction Derby. Now for modern, whew, let's see here. Let's try not to cap out with typical modern ones here. Um, I will say currently for modern, and when I say modern, I guess I'm going to have to lean towards probably the 360s, the PS3s, and the Xbox Ones. I'm going to try to keep it up to date that way. Um, probably for Xbox One, I'd have to say a real cool one that I actually played and is very punishing is Volgar the Viking. I don't know if you ever played that one. It was actually a free gold game. Oh, I'm not familiar and, with yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a modern game, but it's made in, like, we'll say, like, a 16-bit style, if that makes any sense. So it almost looks like a Super Nintendo game. And it is just a super difficult platformer that you got to really have your memory set on how you're going to go about going through the game. Um, I did a video on that one on my channel. Actually, I didn't play it. I had um, a Twin Galaxies uh, record holder play it for me. That was the whole fun challenge because he never heard of the game. I'm like, all right, well, you're this great video game uh, Twin Galaxy (laughs) record holder. Let's see how well you do. And uh, I will say for a first try, he did way better than I did on my first try. So I can't can't harass him too much. But uh, even he was sitting there saying, yeah, this game's going to take some time to get used to. (laughs) But um, no, I like that one probably just because it it meshes the modern and the the new, uh, old and the new in a good way. Um, another modern one, ah, let's see, I almost want to start flipping through. I got to say, I don't know, does Skyrim still count? That's kind of modern. Yeah, I would count Skyrim. Yeah, I got to say, that that is a game that you can really just forget about the world around you for a month easy and just live <laughs> in a game. <laughs> I mean, that one is a, it's a double-edged sword, though. I mean, you kind of... You kind of forget what the outside world's like for a while. <laughs> but, um, no, that uh, that series alone, I actually started playing that on the computer when it was uh, Daggerfall, which I think is the second installment of that series. I never played the original, which was Arena, which was a long time ago. But I started with Daggerfall, and I always liked the game, but it is nowhere near. Like, everything I wanted to do in the old ones, you can actually do in this modern one. So that's why it was just, you know, that's an excellent game to go with the series. But, um, all right, we hit my Volgar for that one. We got our Skyrim, which is cross-platform. And for modern, I'm just going to say um, it's because PS4 ain't got it yet, but hopefully they will soon. I'd have to say on the PS3, that Twisted Metal is pretty awesome. I don't know if you got to play the newer Twisted Metal when it came out. That one's got a lot of replay value for me. So many, I'm taking notes. Oh, I got you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh, it's just called Twisted Metal. And it was released for the PS3, and they I think they did a fantastic job. My only gripe about the game is they have a story mode, which is awesome because it it like does a whole story around each character, and you have to be that character and work through it. And unfortunately, they only do it for a, a few characters. I was excited thinking they'd do it for every character in the game. But they didn't. They just did it for a few of them. So maybe in a future version or even for a DLC, I would have paid to do the story mode for other characters because it, they just made it more interesting, almost like a Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? They like gave you all these different missions, but they're car and destruction. And I mean, I'm a real sucker when it comes to car destruction games. <laughs> so oh. that's why that one's got to be up there. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are appalled. I didn't sit there and say... Zelda and Grand Theft Auto, which I love all those games, but I mean, I'm thinking about games that you can pop in and start playing again. I mean, as much as I love Zelda, I'm sorry, after I beat a Zelda, I don't want to play that again for like a few years at best. Because I mean, you're like done. It was a big adventure, if that makes any sense. I don't know Mm. who wants to just keep picking up and playing something over and over when you already did like a story like that. that. Those type of games just don't click with me in that respect. So for replay value... That's my best list I can give you off the top of my head. And um, speaking of something that's done more now and wasn't really done back in the day is DLC. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because, that's, that's yeah. some more stuff you're never going to own, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> DLCs are like released 
all the time now. Yep. And people are just saying, you know, they just released. I mean, they just like subtract like 10 levels from the original game yep. and then release as DLC. Yep. Well, so, all I can say about that, it's no different than good old doing transaction with cash and credit cards and debit cards. I mean, don't you pay to win. Yeah, you make it you make it available out there, and you know what? I I gotta admit, it's nice and convenient. DLC is awesome in the respect for some people that hey, there's those people out there that either have maybe a gaming channel or are just super impatient, and with DLC, then you get that game at like midnight. Whereas people like me that still want the old retail, guess what? I gotta wait until GameStop opens at 10 a.m. Whereas this guy already recorded a video three hours ago and has it posted on YouTube because he did the DLC. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I mean it's it's got its pros and cons but I've I personally feel if I paid for something I want to physically own it and the only way I would find it more acceptable with DLC is I don't know how many experiences you've had with it but I have not had a positive experience once with it I really felt that I was um safe with the DLC with Xbox 360 because I felt Microsoft actually knew what they were doing and guess what? I get an Xbox One for my 360, and all of my Xbox Live Arcade games that I bought do not work on the Xbox One. So really? what, I'm SOL all those games I bought? Wow. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I I always had an issue with, like, even, because me, I'm, like, I just, the backwards compatibility, even with the disc, I never understood why we couldn't do it. Well, it, it's a problem of making money. They can yeah. do it. It's, Xbox One can definitely emulate a 360. It's just they don't feel like doing that. Yeah, it's just and because I remember when PlayStation Three, like the first yep. first PlayStation Three, did it, yeah. and then all of a sudden a month later, it was like, oh no, it doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, or actually, the uh, fan fact that a lot of people don't know: to all PS3s, all play PS1 games at least. I'll give them that. Oh, okay. All the models. So you can throw a PS1 game in it because that's like nothing. It's nothing for a PS3, I think, to read or emulate it. But PS2 is the real hard part for the PS3 because they actually, those big originals were so big and so expensive is because all the physical hardware that wasn't an original PS2 physically was inside those PS3s on top of the PS3 hardware. That's partially why those things overheated all the time. Hmm. that makes any sense you had like two computers in one in one thing and (laughs) and you got all that and me i have one of those originals and i just had to put the damn thing away because every time i'd play it for about five minutes those fans would kick on and you think a jet engine was going to take off in my basement (laughs) i'm like this thing's driving me nuts so i what did i end up doing giving more money to sony and buying a slim ps3 that is nice and quiet so Maybe it's just another racket for them to keep selling the same console over and over and over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they gotta make their money somehow. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> um. So, what are some things you do outside of YouTube? Outside of YouTube, well, definitely, I'd have to say disc golfing's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough of that. Have yet to place or really go to any tournaments, but that's more of a, it's just never at the right time. Um, I've only been disc golfing for about three or four years. Excellent. It's one of those sports that is easy for anybody to play, extremely dis- difficult for anybody to master. Mm. So um, it's uh, also very economic because all you need is a few discs. You, after about 30 bucks, you're good. It's not like real golf where you got to drop two grand to get your ball rolling. You know what I mean? That's why I kind of went the hippie route with the disc golf. But I got to say the hippies are a lot kinder than the snobs with regular golf. So I'll stick with them. <laughs> but uh, no, other than probably disc golf, uh, recently I picked up for uh, entertainment value is in my area. I noticed there's a lot of bike trails by me. Hmm. And um I'm not the most fit at all. I'm in IT for God's mm-hmm. sakes. How fit am I going to be? <laughs> so I'll take I'll stereotypical do that to myself. But plenty of IT guys out there probably angry. I'm sure, but no. Um, the the problem I was having is I had a regular bike. I'd go to a bike trail and I'm like, man, I really want to push it and actually 
go through the trail, guess what? I'd get so far, I could barely get myself back home without hitting <laughs> cardiac arrest. So, <laughs> so I had to think to myself, well, I still want to enjoy all these great trails by my house, but I don't want to kill myself neither because I'm not an Olympic uh, star to say the least. So I did some homework and uh, I actually found that they're starting to sell electric bikes that are actually cost-effective ones. And I got myself a super economical electric bike, and I recently got it uh, last week. And you know what? Nothing is more of a dream of knowing when I don't feel like ped- pedaling. It's like a motorcycle. You got to throttle. You mm-hmm. just you just juice it, and guess what? You start cooking. <laughs> now, here's the fun thing with it. I'm on a trail, and it's a very, um, we'll say, enthusiastic biking community around me. <laughs> so there's a lot of people out there biking. And not many people are aware of electric bikes, surprisingly. So they're all out doing their thing. So I decide for fun is to uh, get myself a nice, um, you know, those big old um, quicks you can get at the gas station, chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'll get a nice big chocolate milk. And then uh, these people are just sweating and burning and drinking their Gatorade and trying hard on these speed bikes. Well, these electric bikes go 20 miles per hour full <laughs> throttle. <laughs> so I just pull out a quick and, you know, milkshake or Sunday, and I start drinking it right next to them, driving that, and they don't understand how I'm doing that on a bicycle, <laughs> showing them that they're just working their ass off. I think next time I'll smoke a cigar while I'm on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> So that's been my new hobby lately, getting some fresh air on the bike and then probably kill myself with dairy and cigars. <laughs> and these are the last two questions, okay? Sure. Now, these questions are kind of on the spot. Okay. So first one, which is my favorite question. If you could have a YouTuber's login for 24 hours, you can do something nice, something bad. It could be a big channel, any channel. You could delete their videos or you can promote yourself. Whose login do you want? <laughs> Whose login do I want? <laughs> Probably the Tonight Show, since that thing is always on, or Jimmy Fallon, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that thing is always plastered on YouTube. So you know what? I would take that, and I would use that to shamelessly promote my channel and be like, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon gives a thumbs up to this channel and see how many of them casuals I could pick up. That's probably what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one is... Um, I'm someone new. I just stumbled across your channel. Why should I subscribe? Um, I would say subscribe just because if you subscribe to my channel, I feel that you're actually empowered being a subscriber because if all it takes is a comment or an email to me and I will actually get back to you or listen to it and accommodate that, I mean, my goal is no matter how big or small I am, to a certain degree, I would try my best to always at least do or give the time of day to whatever my fans are recommending me to do, or subscribers, I should say. So I think you're going to get that with some people more. Like a good example of somebody that's big about it that I actually feel that kind of does it is, uh, I don't know if you ever see Markiplier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's not too bad. I mean, personally, I don't care for the games he plays and stuff, but... He's at least got a good enough team to give the illusion that it seems like he listens to his fan base, and he does a good job considering how large that fan base is. I think he's in the the seven million racket. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that that's all I could really say is you'll get that more. Um, you know, like you go to the mom and pop store or you go to Walmart. Well, if you come to me, you're gonna get that nice mom and pop store feel instead of just get the hell out of here. You bought it at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna say. You're gonna get that when you subscribe to my channel. Okay, say what my channel actually is. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's just uh, KWKBOX, KWK Box, all one word. And if you search that on YouTube, it should pop up immediately with a whole bunch of different Let's Plays and retro games and some disc golf stuff, which will get greater with time. And maybe an electric bike video of me smoking a cigar and getting people angry on the road. <laughs> so, <laughs> never know what the future holds with this channel. <laughs> But the best way, actually, for everything is just kwkbox.com because everything, if you go there, all my social medias, all those things are all tied into the website. So if you really want or interested, just go to that website, and it'll link you to anything and everything you could possibly want to know about me. Trust me. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you so much for joining. Excellent. I appreciate you inviting. Um, And that's it. Cool. Well, take it easy, guys.
And we're back with the word of the week. Justin, what is it? Today's word of the week is chicken wages. And that means a low income wage earned from a fast food restaurant. Typically at a fast food chicken place. Oh, like where? This can apply to a lot of people, not even fast food, not only fast food places. A lot of people get paid low wages, especially in America, which is surprising because other countries as well get low wages. <laughs> well, I think that, yeah, that's a better term for it, slave wages, because that everything is dealing with food. Anyway, a lot of people eat chicken. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I had Chipotle the other day, and I haven't had Chipotle in so long. Mm-hmm. I have. I didn't realize how long it was. Me either. Excuse me. So me either. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was good. The chicken was a little overcooked. I gotta find a new Chipotle. We used to have the best Chipotle. They just moved across the street, and it's just like it's not the same no more. They have security now. This Chipotle, it's a mess over there. And you know, Catalina still eat like a beast, so it don't matter to her. Mm-hmm. I guess it, it depends on like the neighborhood you live in if it needs extra like, security or not. But, um, yeah, that's what happens when you travel outside your neighborhood to go to Chipotle. Oh, you thought it was in my neighborhood? Oh. No. You tried it though, but you failed. Now, we'll be moving on to the next segment, which is Obsession of the Week. Hey guys, it's Stefan. Hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Justin and I are now making it easier than ever to get your exposure fixed. Along with YouTube and iTunes, you guys can now check us out on TuneIn, Cast Roller, and Double Twist. Just search Exposure with Stefan McMillan and Justin Watson. And now, back to the show. Hey guys, Justin here, and I just want to take a moment to tell you, Exposure is such a joy to do, even though Stefan is a part of it. But to maintain our consistency, we need your help. Patreon.com is a site where people can give money monthly to support their favorite content creators. If you love us, head over to Patreon.com slash Slowlist. See you there. Hi ho folks, this is Turwinkle of the Adventures of Turwinkle, the gnome mage at youtube.com slash palmerbomber1, and you're listening to Exposure. And guys, we're back with Obsessions of the Week. And my Obsession of the Week is someone I stand for. And no, it's not Mariah, but it's Ed Sheeran. I stand for him. If he wanted to run for president, nah, I'm lying. <laughs> but I stand for Ed. And you know, whenever someone describes Ed, they always, they always say talented. And I feel like that's a great way to describe somebody. Or that's a great attribute for people to notice of you. Yeah. Not everyone has that option. I know I'm talking to one person that does it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Ed too. I love I really love to men chamber of secrets. So, you know, I'm a big fan. I don't even get that joke. Every British person looks the same. No. He doesn't look like Daniel Radcliffe at all. 
Oh gosh, you don't even know who I'm talking about, do you? Are you talking about Ron? Yeah. I'm gonna need you to get your faces together. All white people don't look the same. All gingers don't look the same either. No, my obsession of this week is Orange is the New Black and Netflix. Um, I don't know what time this episode is going to be up If I'm already watching it If I'm finished or not But I just love Orange is the New Black It's such an amazing show Good job Netflix, kudos to you Keep up the good work And hopefully there's more seasons to come You just did the most We may be reviewing Orange is the New Flop One day On the Slow List Network Type in the search engine We don't have a custom URL yet Oh yes, we're planning on that. We're gonna send that. We're gonna send out an application, some interviews or whatever for people to join in. And I'm looking forward to that. Maybe Justin can get on that at some point or other. Applications. We're gonna get Catalina in time. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it a bigger production. We'll see. We'll be right back with content highlights. And guys, we're back with content highlight. And today, the piece of content I want to highlight is Ed Sheeran interview with The Breakfast Club. And I'll tell you why. He's very honest in this interview. Even though he hasn't thrown Ellie Golden under the bus. Because if you guys don't know, the rumor is that Don't is about her. But he hasn't thrown her under the bus yet. And I think he should. What I like about the interview is, first of all, like, the first two minutes is talking about eating booty. And I know um, Mariah is, like, she seems like she's not down to earth, whatever. But I feel like if you hang out with her, she is down to earth. Like, I mean, I have never really heard any, like, diva outlashes or something. Like, her throwing some cell phone in someone's face or... You know, like, even remember Ariana Grande? She had her moments, and it's just like, well, you know, first of all, already. Yeah, everyone says she's a diva. I mean, I know she's, the, you know, she's called a diva and everything, but have you ever really heard Mariah was so mean? Well, did you see her Cribs episode? No. Oh, that's a diva. If you're such a fan, you have to see that episode. I think I've seen Ludacris's one. <sighs> I used to watch the car show. Uh, Pit My Ride. Yeah, Pit My Ride. I used to watch Wildin' Out, Yo Mama. Oh, yeah. Well, the Mar- the Mariah Carey Crib episode, Cribs episode is a classic in American television. Oh, well, was this the interview where they were saying he was, like, drunk or something, or he, he actually drunk a lot, took some shots or something? He is Irish now. At least half Irish or something like that. All right, we don't stereotype around here on Exposure. Well, I don't. You just sent out personal attacks to Joey Graceffa. And Joey, if you want to come on the show, I know you just came out a few weeks ago. Don't hesitate to ask. Please hesitate to ask. I'll send you an email. You see my cool peeps. I love Joey. I wish you guys would do more videos. You guys should just make a channel. You know, wouldn't that be a good idea? What is that, Shane Dawson and Joey Graceffa? Yeah, and Joey. Oh, your two faves. Um, yeah, that would be cool, I guess. Yeah, my two faves. I don't mind. And you know I stand for shame. YouTube stand. Like, I'm not going to see shame. I'm not going to stay in line, though. I'll stay in line for Ed. I would stay in line for Whitney, too, but, you know. It's funny. I don't stand for Celine, though. Celine? I like Celine Dion? Uh, yeah, you know, the vocal trinity. Uh, uh, okay. What was that? You know the vocal trinity. Oh, yeah. Um, Celine, Celine, Whitney, Mariah. Whitney, Brittany. I'm sorry, who? Celine, Whitney, Mariah. Mariah. Whitney. Brittany. Not Brittany. Mariah. Okay. That's, that's a different list than I have, but okay. 
Um, excuse me. When has Britney ever been able to rival Whitney Houston? Listen to her every time, and then come back, and we'll, you know. Whitney's probably laughing somewhere. <laughs> oh, what, what is Britney? Not Britney. Brandy fit in. Who? <laughs> Brandy. Why? Brandy is not part of Vocal Trinity. The Vocal Trinity, they can cover a song and make it better than the original. For example? I've Always Love You, Against All Odds, All By Myself. Wait, but Dolly's version is superior. To who? To everyone. Dolly's version was nice until Whitney sang it. Okay. Even if you don't want to go, I always love you. All the man I need. Will always love you. Hello. When I tell you, Whitney went off and there was no way in the world she was singing about Bobby. And she went off. Mariah's done some covers I like more than Rudy. Against all odds. Without you. <laughs> yeah, I think Celine Celine I'm not I don't really care about the vocal part. But um as far as songs go, definitely Mariah and Whitney stump her. Oh, Phil Collins is part of the vocal vocal trinity. Who? Phil Collins. I already told you who the vocal trinity was. You can't have four people in the vocal trinity. Says who? The definition of trinity. <laughs> and we'll be right back. And guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Exposure. Thank you so much for all your support. We appreciate it so much. Please share this show. Please share this episode. Leave us a review or rating on any platform you are listening to us to. Don't forget to visit our blog. If you want to be a guest, if you want somebody to be a guest, go visit our blog. Click be a guest, fill out the form, and we'll get right back to you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out our Patreon page where you can win perks and you know, hang out with us some, maybe, you know, get a little Skype chat, just, you know, donate a little something, and don't forget to check out our guest, Kevin, KWK Box, thank you so much for listening, I don't know how many times I say thank you, but thank you, thank you, and we'll see you on the next episode of Oh.